Now, did you, you um, went to school here? Yeah, I went to the uh, Bardentown Indian School from uh, 1952 to 1958. 1958. What, what grades were those? Pardon? The grades. What grades? One through, one through six. One through six. Oh, well, was it six? Or? One through five. One through five. five. So it was uh, 52 to 57. Okay. Because I started when I was five. Okay. Was that that was first grade? That's that was first grade, right? Okay. Um, since since you've got a, you've got melting groceries, well just just tell us a little bit about what you remember about going to school here, and the importance of it, the 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 day to day experience of it. Just some of your memories. Well, we had an amazing teacher, Mrs. DeHay, mm-hmm. and her daughter also was a student out there, and. Uh, we did not have inside bathrooms. We had the old out the house, yeah. and uh, one of our relatives was the cook in the kitchen. Had a long, tight table where everybody sat around when we ate. And she had the grades one through five in the one classroom, and she was very good because she was able to teach each one without it bothering the other section or whatever like that. And I really enjoyed using the multiplication cards yeah. because they really helped me learn. There were cards that you held up, and they'd have the question like on one side and the answer on the other side and if you didn't know it you'd flip them over and think like they were uh, cardboard cards rectangular shaped yeah and uh, it was a great experience we uh, had a lot of activities playing outside recess different games uh, going through all the seasons Mm -hmm. so what what would you mean what do you mean by going through all the seasons of the year yeah uh, Winter, fall, yeah. things like that. Yeah. Or, or actually, when we actually went to school, you know. So, when, what were the times that you you weren't at school? What did you, uh, what time? We were talking. I think the times went in relationship with the regular school yeah. thing. I think it's now like August, about June. So you had the summer vacation, right? right. Yeah, you had well, the summer vacation in between. The ladies earlier were talking about taking some time off to to pick cotton. Did you, did My grandfather farmed. He he grew cotton. He hired people in the community to come pick it for one cent a pound. Mm-hmm. I had a sister who used to cheat, and she put brick in the bottom of the croquet sack, <laughs> make it way more. This is becoming a familiar story. <laughs> <laughs> and, did, uh, did you yourself have, uh, have the privilege <laughs> to pick cotton? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I picked cotton. I uh, helped with the farm animals. One yeah. of my tasks was gathering eggs. My grandmother raised everything on the farm except for the, the basic staples that you couldn't raise on the farm that you had to buy from the store. Yeah. She bragged about how she could take $3 and come out with more bags of groceries than you could carry. Now you can take $30 and come out with one bag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I was commenting with somebody just now at the Murphy gas station how I used to pay $0.19 cent a gallon for gas. <laughs> it took me $42 to fill my truck up just now, and I used to could fill it up for 3 bucks. <laughs> and uh, we got uh, I got like two pairs of shoes a year. Mm-hmm. And if you wore them out, you took cardboard and you cut it out into holes to cover the holes on the bottom of it and... Till your next one came again, and yeah. where'd, you okay. get the, where'd you get the shoes? Pardon? Where'd you buy them? The, the shoes. My father bought them from somewhere. Oh, okay. No. My so, father and my mother. Yeah, yeah. But we we had a, a gentleman that run Abraham's Furniture Store downtown Charleston, and he used to come around on Saturdays, and he'd sell your furniture for two dollars a week payments and things like that. And uh, then we had a guy that came through and sold vegetables off the truck, and we had another guy that came through and sold fish off his truck. And things like that. But like I said, the majority of stuff was raised right in there. And my grandmother had cows, and she'd milk the cows and then let the milk set up, and it form butter, uh, it would form cream on top. And he'd take, she'd take that off and put it in a churn and churn her own butter. And then my grandfather had a uh, round smoke pole house, a pole smoke house, mm-hmm. where he butchered his meat, put it inside there. He'd hickory smoke it, salt it down. And he'd load up his wagon like on Thursday and drive all the way down to what we call Remount Road now and sell meat to people on Fridays. Is that pork primarily? Uh, it was hogs, oh, pork, yeah. chicken, whatever. Oh. <laughs> and uh, we, I used to help with the butchering. My grandmother would take the twenty two rifle, shoot the hog in between the eyes. She'd jump the fence. Fifty-some-year-old lady, stick the hog so it would breathe, bleed, yeah. grab both hind legs, flip that hog across the fence, and then we had a 55-gallon drum on an angle in the ground. We built fire up around it to get it hot, and we'd take that hog and dip him down and then lay him up on the table. Six or seven of the ladies in the community were there at raises and scraping the hair off before it set up again. If it set up, you took a crocus, uh, laid it on the hog, and you poured hot water back on it to make the hair loosen up again. Mm-hmm. And you didn't waste nothing. You made hog head cheese. You made pig's feet. Mm-hmm. I mean, you did the tail. You did the stomach. Mm-hmm. You used the intestines. You washed them and turned them inside out mm-hmm. for the sausage. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. All this type of stuff. Yeah. Hash? You make hash here? Like they, like they do in... Uh, she cut everything, so I'm yeah. sure hash yeah. was there somewhere too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, so with, with the hogs that he would, he would butcher and sell, did he just sell off the, the, you know, the ham and shoulder and so forth and keep the... I think he, I think he cut the whole thing go. up and it sold whatever the people needed. Oh, okay. Okay. But um, he but he kept a generous supply in stock for us to have to eat also. And I used to go through with him after he'd break the corn and he'd take the the uh, sheaves off of the corn stalks and strip it and tie a little thing around it and what they call fodder and put it up in the winter time for the ho- for the mule to have something to eat uh-huh. with things like that. How, how much how much of that way of life do you think is still still in this area? Um, are people still able to farm much are they able to, to I don't think they do as much as it was back then and, and uh, the younger generation I don't think are as knowledgeable about it as we were coming up because my grandmother used to can everything and put it up and had I remember the old uh, curd jars and lids and the pressure cookers and uh, how she would what you call blanch things and, and store it up for the winter time and then I used to help her make her sweet potato paw which you dug a half moon down into the ground and lined it with pine straw and put your sweet potatoes in there, go back over the top with pine straw and then cover the pine straw and cover that up with dirt. And in the wintertime, if she wanted sweet potatoes, I just went in and dug them to the side of the bank and bring them in there too. Yeah, see, that, 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 <laughs> I was telling Mo, that fascinates me, that, that, that they didn't rot and they didn't, they didn't spread. Oh, no. they, just they, they kept real good. How that, why that worked uh, you know, and how they figured out to do that is, is amazing to me. Yeah, she never explained to me how she came about it. It was just something that was passed down from one generation to another. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, so she helped. She helped deliver quite a few children in this community. She, she was uh, like a midwife, and uh, yeah. if if a child had a abnormal belly button, they'd take a coin and strap it on there for so many days and make it go down. And back then, if a lady had a child, the other ladies in the community came in for about nine days. All that lady that had the child did was concentrate her attention on the child, and they, the others would come in and help if she had other children and do the housework and cook and. For a husband or whatever like that, and give her a chance to recuperate, and get back on her feet. And she she would keep her her newborn with her though. I mean, was the, the mother would, yeah. yes. So but that's all of, she did was concentrate her right, attention so to the newborn. A, a bonding time for them. Right. right. Oh, okay. Um, um, what? So, in, in addition to delivering babies, uh, your grandmother uh, did she? She do did everything. Did? I mean, she she knew about. We'd go into the woods and dig a root called sassafras and uh-huh. make sassafras tea out of it for illnesses and stuff like that and then uh, I go back to when we would have someone die back then they didn't have people embalmed they had uh, the ladies would wash the person dress them lay them out on the table and we had a couple of our relatives who were carpenters they built the wooden caskets and stuff and put them in it and things like that and then one of our traditions was when someone died we sat up all night with them yeah. at church yeah. we had an actual vigil wake all night long we'd have coffee and something to eat and things like that and they'd sing songs and they'd cry for a while and they'd sing songs they'd eat they'd drink coffee yeah. and Things like that, but now that's got it. That's done away with too, because you got the funeral home. You go there maybe from six to eight or five to seven, and yeah. it's over with until they bury them the next day or whatever. What do you, do you have a sense of something lost with uh, you know? If you talk about the younger generation not being interested in in the farming and, and, and canning and so forth. I mean, do you think? Well, I feel like now, with the, especially with the way the economy is, it'd be a good thing for everybody to know because I have a son that's trying his hand at farming, and he just started raising him some chickens and things like that, and. Mm-hmm. That would help boost things you wouldn't have to buy from the store. And uh, is he is he in this area farming? Yeah, he all my all my children. I have uh, three sons and a daughter and seven grands, and they're all centrally located, about twenty mile radius at the most. What's he farming? Uh, I mean, other than, other than chickens. He <laughs> uh, he planted corn, squash, cucumbers, peanuts, uh, watermelons. Yeah. How's it going? It seems to be doing real well, man. He's got two adjoining neighbors that live by him, and they're all thinking about getting together next year and doing a community garden, oh, all three right. families yeah. together. Okay. I, you, he needs to go? <laughs> no, doesn't he? That was for me. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I, I need to get going. Yeah, yeah I, didn't, I didn't want to keep you too long, but uh, right. um, before, we, before we get into questions, can I jump in here. Will, anything? Sure. And I'll, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll leave my younger brother who... Brother Charles, did you want to talk about for last year at the school and the part of going to another school and yeah, the, that was yeah, I do want to ask you. Yeah. For you. Um, where did you go after you, after you finished? I went to uh, Berkeley Elementary, and then I went to, uh, it was Berkeley Elementary, and then we went to Berkeley High. Yeah. The, the, 
transition from going to school here to going to, to Berkeley, um, was that easy? Was it difficult? Did you feel it prepared? was different. Yeah. Uh, you run into people from all walks of life, and some people accept change, and some people are set in their ways. And back then, way back in the 50s and 60s, people had certain ways they thought about different things and about different people and cultures and races and stuff like that. So you... You blend it in with mostly people, but you're always going to got your ten percent that's going to be oddballs, no matter what goes on or whatever. Yeah. So. Well, what, what about in terms of the academics? Did you feel like you were? Oh, I, my, I have a twin sister, and she and I competed against each other to stay on the on our roll and distinguished list. And, oh, okay. Uh, okay. So, I, I really enjoyed school. I, I, the only th- sad thing was I. Uh, I had a father who thought that once he paid the dollar and twenty five cent per week for lunch that he had spent enough money on you and you had work to do when you got home and you took off what you call your school clothes and put on your work clothes and you had a task to do till it got dark, then you went in and one of the traditions we used to have, we took a number three wash tub, mm-hmm. full it up with water in the morning time, like the days were all hot and we'd set it out there in the sun and then we took it in that evening for we'll take a bath yeah. and the cleanest child took a bath first and to graduate on down the line to the dirtiest one <laughs> like that and uh, so it wasn't the oldest, it was... It was. Pardon? I've heard that, but based on oldest to youngest, but this is based on cleanest to... Cleanest to... <laughs> <laughs> so what you doing but, but the old saying was, you just make sure you didn't throw the baby out in the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> what you do in the winter, then, for, for that sort of thing? Cause well, we had a uh, wood-burning stove and a wood-burning right. fireplace, and, yeah. and I, if I'm not mistaken, we probably did heat some water in the wintertime, but we utilized the actual things which were present, the solar system and stuff like that, as, as much as possible. Because we had a well, and I remember the main got together every so often, and they'd do what they call a well cleaning. One guy would go down, and he'd do it. We'd draw the water out until it got to get to the mud part and everything, and uh, he'd go down on the ladder, and he'd, he'd clean out the bottom of it and had men hauling it up and dumping it at one side, and then well used to get what they call wiggle tails or wiggle waggles in it and sometimes you could put uh, bleach in there to kill those and then sometimes we'd take a live catfish and put him in there and he'd keep all the wiggle waggles oh, eating out of it and then yeah. this younger brother of mine he got aggravated with my dad when then he threw the cat in the well and, <laughs> <laughs> and then we thought we'd graduated and went to the city when when my father put a hand pump around front oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. we didn't have running water for a lot. We never had an inside bathroom yeah. up until yeah. the time he sold it. We had the outhouse, and you'd get out there, and once it was time to move the outhouse, you took the lime and put it in there and covered it back up, and you went and dug a hole. But you tried to maintain a proper distance between the drinking water and the, and the outhouse and things like that. I never, could, for the life of me, could understand why we had a two-seater outhouse. Yeah. I never wanted to share going to the bathroom. No. <laughs> I'm getting involved in a conversation with somebody. You want to keep <laughs> well, what, I'm sorry. Well, Go ahead. Did he... Was around during desegregation. Yeah. Did he know it was going on? Yeah. That, during desegregation, uh, when the schools were desegregated, did, did you feel an impact of that, or was that? Oh yeah. Really uh, like I say, if if you weren't exactly real fair skin and real straight hair, and you know they they had you stereotyped and they had you put in the category they wanted you to be in, no matter if you said you were an Indian and then a lot. We had some real bad names called at one time, yeah. brass ankles and. And things like that, and mulattoes, and you know. But like I say, you consider the source, and then you then you know why things happen because they can say what they want to say. You, you still got your racial problems today in the in the world, no matter where you go or what you do, you know. And, and you got some people that are set in their ways that they're not going to change if the good Lord was standing in front of them. So <laughs> all you do is pray for people like that and hope for the best. Now, was this when you were in high school that that or, or that desegregation occurred? Was that? I think I had an easier time in the transition when we were in the elementary school, but when you get into the high school, yeah. some people seem like they thought they matured more and they thought more as adults and stuff like that. And yeah. and you had your bully types and, yeah. and stuff in school, which goes on today quite frequently, especially I've been reading up in Massachusetts area and things like that. I mean, they, but it really it's really serious now because it gets to the point where the person goes out and commits suicide because yeah. they've been bullied so bad. Yeah. 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 Well, did... Were there other uh, folks from your community? You, you said your sister. Were there other folks at the school from your community? Did they did that y'all did y'all sort of stay together when you went to to Berkeley or? or? Yeah, it, it, you, you uh, supported each other and yeah. stayed together. And in the community, it didn't make no difference. I mean, everybody knew we, everybody was family. It was either somebody's aunt, uncle, sister, brother, nephew, niece, or whatever, you know. And everybody knew who you were and stuff like that. But, but how, like, how far is the Berkeley school from here? About eleven miles. Okay. Did you did you, did you 
get a ride or did you walk or did the bus we rode the bus, rode the bus, bus came but out. I remember one time it was real cold and my uncle Ham's <laughs> cornfield I had set a corn stalk fire to warm up while I was waiting and then the fire got away from me and burnt the whole field and, <laughs> and I thought I was going to get killed that, that day <laughs> okay. and, and any, at, the, at the time that you were uh, that you went over to Berkeley um, any sense of how many folks from this community were in school at the same time with you? Any what now? Do you, do you have any sense of how many how many other children, young uh, teenagers, were in school with you from from this community when you went over to Berkeley? How many? About how many uh, students you had going to school there? How many from from this? That area? was quite a few. We had we had basically what half a bus loaded mm-hmm. at least. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So good. So a good number. You weren't right. you weren't all alone mm-hmm. there. Okay. Oh no. Okay. Okay. You caught the bus together. Yeah. yeah. The bus came into your community and picked up your community to take. Pardon? The bus came into your community and picked up your communities. Yeah, it was a designated route yeah. laid out by the school itself because they picked up people like up around L and M Grocery and, and on the route of seven. So number stops. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. It just just like a mail carrier, they have a certain route yeah, that they yeah. travel or whatever according to the location. Yeah, they didn't force you right. to all go to one spot. And, and some of your bus drivers were good, and some of them could be hard to get along with, and things like that. Yeah. yeah. I drove school bus. Did you have to go to one spot for your for for the yeah 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 we we we, yeah, we had a designated area one spot. Oh, you all went to the. To well, we had a designated area was, out by the highway. If there's a quarter mile up the road, there's another six. group of people who come to that spot. Right. Okay. You stop three, four, five times depending on. Okay. okay. But we were blessed because my father lived not very far from the highway, so mm-hmm. we didn't have very far to walk. Okay. But it got cold. Oh, it got very cold. <laughs> you had to keep warm. And it got probably as hot as it is now. When we had no air conditioning or anything, we just had a big oak tree. <laughs> anything else? Well, I don't, I don't want to keep you. I don't want your, your okay. to melt. Okay. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I appreciate God bless it. everybody. Thank you very much.